Hello friends and welcome to some afternoon manna, okay? Uh, we're going to continue on our topic from last week on spiritual warfare. And this is part four, okay? So here it is, spiritual war warfare, part four, amen. And let's, uh, uh, before we dive into the scriptures, let's say a word of prayer. Father, I thank you and I praise you that you are such an awesome God. Father, I thank you that you are in complete control of every situation and every circumstance in our life. Thank you that we are seated in heavenly places by Christ Jesus above every principality and power that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And we want to thank you in advance that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And Father, I pray for the precious anointing of the Holy Spirit uh, that you would help me to teach this class, and we ask it in Jesus' matchless name. Amen and amen. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's just go uh, to our uh, scriptures uh, and in continuation uh, of spiritual warfare. Uh, we have begun with Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 12, and it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Aha! For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah! And we're going to begin this with our worship song uh, that fits this topic. And uh, the, the, our worship song is, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And listen to the words, okay? A mighty fortress is our God, a stronghold never fails. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal is prevailing. Still our ancient soul conspires to work God's woe. His craft and power are great and armed with bitter hate. On earth is not his deed. If we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. Unless God's man is on our side, the man of God's own duty. As proof that Maybe my Jesus, it is He, the Lord of hosts, His name, from age to age the same, and He must win the battle. Though this world with devils filled 
should threaten to undo us. We will not fear, for God has will. His truth to triumph through Prince of darkness, grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. God's word shall overthrow. Hallelujah! Uh, and uh, this is such a beautiful, beautiful hymn. Amen. Okay, so uh, thank you for listening. And we'll just quickly go over the words of this hymn of Mighty Fortress is Our God. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he. Amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe that seek to work us woe is talking about the devil, about Satan and his demons, okay? <laughs> his craft and power are great. So let's not underestimate his craft and his power. But we have to remember that he is a defeated foe because Christ defeated him at Calvary. And armed with cruel hate. Aha! What's his weapon? Cruel hate on earth is not his equal. Wow! Okay? Uh, all right, let's go on. Did we in our own strength confide? Our striving would be losing. Ah, so, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's much more powerful than we are in the flesh, in the natural. But when we fight him through the Spirit, through prayer and through the Word of God, and by putting on the full armor of God, we can overthrow him because he is a defeated foe. We're not the right man on our side. Amen? Talking about Jesus. The man of God's own choosing. Okay? Thus ask who that may be. Christ Jesus it is he. Lord Sabaoth his name. Aha! He's the Lord God of hosts. Jesus Christ commands the armies of God. And we should never forget that only a third of the angels fell and became demons. But two-thirds of the angels are part of God's army. And they're fighting on our behalf. Hallelujah! The Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps around us. And delivers us. Okay? So let's go on. From age to age the same. And he must win the battle. Did you see what it said? From age to age the same. Jesus Christ is the same. Now and forevermore. He was, he is, and he is still to come. Hallelujah. He changes not. All right, and he must win the battle, okay? So the battle is not mine, but the battle is the Lord's, and he's fighting on my behalf. Hallelujah. Now we have to do our fighting, okay? But it's spiritual warfare. And now let's go on. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us. Did you see what that said? This world is filled with devils. Hallelujah. Okay? Uh, should threaten to undo us. We will not fear, for God had willed. 
his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. I like to change that word fell to slay. One little word shall slay him. Like we're fighting giants and we slay the giants by the, by the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God. <laughs> that word above all earthly powers. No thanks to them abideth. The Spirit and the gifts are ours through Him who with us sideth. If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. God fighting for me is more than the world against me. And we're not, we have to remember we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. For the victory has already been won at the cross at Calvary. When Jesus died and rose from the dead, he took the keys of hell, death, and Hades from the devil and made a public spectacle of him to all. Hallelujah. Uh, that word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abide it. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us side it. Let goods and kindreds go and kindred go. This mortal life also, the body they may kill. God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Hallelujah. We shall overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And they love their lives not unto death. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So, uh, okay. Um, uh, let's, let's continue with our, uh, where we left, uh, last time, um, uh, and we were talking about, uh, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Amen? Okay. So, in the heavenly realms, uh, we have principalities, we have powers, we have rulers of darkness. So, Satan and his demons are really well organized, and they have hierarchies, they have layers of authority. Amen? With Satan, uh, 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 the devil in charge. Amen? Um, and... Um, so it talks about rulers, about authorities, about the powers of this dark world against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Uh, in fact, if you've ever read the book uh, written by Frank Peretti uh, that talks about this present darkness, amen? <laughs> it's a beautiful book about spiritual warfare. If you ever want to get a glimpse of what spiritual warfare really is, you should read that book by Frank Peretti, okay? And in that book, Frank talks about uh, uh, the fact that uh, if we could peer into the heavens, into the heavenly realms, amen, uh, uh, we would actually see devils and demons duking it out with one another, fighting one another, amen? And protecting, the angels are protecting us from these demonic hordes that are coming against us. Hallelujah! Okay? All right, so let's go on uh, and uh, let's look at uh, the forces of darkness, okay? And we're going to read from John chapter 12, 31 and John 14 and 30. Now look, uh, look at verse 31. 
Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. Hallelujah! It's talking about Satan himself, about the devil, okay? And then verse 30 says, uh, 14 and 30 says, I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. And this is Jesus saying these words just before his crucifixion. Remember, Jesus was the sinless lamb of God. Amen. And so Satan could not get a foothold in Jesus. There was no accusation of Satan that, uh, that would stand uh, for Jesus because Jesus was sinlessly perfect. And uh, according to scriptures, he was the only sinlessly perfect person that dwelt on the face of this earth. And when I say person, he was fully God, 100% God and 100% man. Hallelujah. So let's go on. And so it's talking about the prince of this world. It's talking about Satan. He's talking about the serpent. Uh, he's talking about the devil. Uh, these are all uh, uh, synonyms for the prince and the power of this world, which is Satan himself. Amen. Okay. Um, let's go on. Um, and Ephesians 2, 1 through, 3, uh, 1 through 2, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Aha! Again talking about the devil, about Satan. Amen? The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. And the way I explain this is, uh, I was saved 40 years ago at the age of uh, 32, and I'm about to turn 73 in July. Amen? So I've been saved for almost uh, 40, 41 years. Uh, amen? Uh, but before I got saved, whether I would like to admit it or not, and I will admit it, uh, I was serving Satan, whether I realized it or not, okay? And after I got saved, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I began to serve Jesus, amen? So, uh, in which you used to live, follow the ways of this world, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work <clears throat> in those who are disobedient. Amen? Um, so when I got saved, when I accepted the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, I became a new creation. All things had passed away. All things had become new. And Jesus Christ began to live in me and the third person of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit came down and dwells in me. My comforter, my friend, the Spirit of truth. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's go on. Um, uh, and John 16, 6 through 11. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Talking about Satan, the devil. Amen? Because when Jesus rose from the dead, it was proof positive that Jesus' blood that was shed for the sins of the whole world was acceptable to God the Father. Amen? And that all our sins were forgiven. And he took the keys of hell, death, and Hades away from Satan and made him a public spectacle uh, in front of everyone when he rose from the dead, in front of all the principalities and powers. 
all the rulers of darkness of this world, all the spiritual uh, uh, spirits of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, let's look at the forces of darkness. Continue. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel, the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's go on. Uh, and now we'll talk about the principalities and powers. If you go to Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 through 13, uh, it says, uh, Daniel um, was fasting and praying uh, for God to give him revelation about the vision that he had seen. Amen. And he fasted for 21 days and prayed for 21 days before the answer came. Okay? And this is the answer. And he got the answer when an angel of God came and stood before Daniel and said the following verses. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. This is the angel talking to Daniel. Uh, notice that any time uh, 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 an angel appears to human beings, they are filled with terror. Amen? And so Daniel was trembling with fear because here was a spiritual being full of the power of God. And when you stand in the power of God, in, in, in the presence of God, you tremble in His presence and you fall down on your knees. Amen. And so um, uh, it says, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourselves before your God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. Hallelujah. And here's the angel telling him, Daniel, you've been praying for 21 days, but the very first day you cried out to God. Your cry was heard in heavens and God had dispatched his angels with the answer to your problem. But then what took you so long? So long? Aha! Wait a minute now. Let the angel explain this. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me. Now, we are talking about a principality over the Persian kingdom. This is a demonic entity that was in charge over the kingdom of Persia. Amen? Resisted, resisted me 21 days. Aha! So as the angel was bringing the answer to Daniel, there was a big fight going on in heaven because the prince of Persia, this demonic principality over the entire area of Persia, withstood that angel and tried his level best to prevent that angel from bringing in the answer. Amen? And there's a lesson to be learned. Many times when we pray, we expect the answers right away. But we have no idea what kind of demonic, satanic opposition our prayers might be coming up against. And the answer is going to come. But we've got to learn to wait for the answer. Amen? Uh, and and so, so there was a fight going on in the heavenlies for 21 days. And it became so bad that this angel had to summon Michael. The archangel, one of the chief princes, he was the archangel in heaven. And the archangel over Israel came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. That's talking about that demonic entity, the king of Persia, the prince of Persia. Amen. Let's go on. Uh, so he said, do you know why I have come to, why I have come to you? Soon. 
And then verse 20, okay, he goes on to say, Do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia. When I go, the prince of Greece will come. Aha! So the angel tells uh, Daniel that the fight is not yet over. I've come, I've brought you the answer to your question. But when I go back, there's another fight waiting for me. And that is the prince of Persia. That's the principality, the demonic entity over Greece that's going, that I will have to fight against because he's going to come. But first, I will tell you what it is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. Hallelujah. And so this angel says that, you know, I was kind of uh, uh, alone fighting these demonic hordes in heaven. Amen. Uh, and then finally, and, and nobody was with me except Michael, the archangel, came to my rescue. Hallelujah. So you see, uh, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And those are the unseen forces we are struggling with. We are struggling against. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But remember what the scripture also says. Okay. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a banner, a standard against him. Because the battle is not mine, but the battle is the Lord's. Do you see how that worked out? Daniel was not fighting a physical war, but he was on his knees praying and crying out to God. And that's what we need to do in this day and age. We need to cry out to God for our families, for our children, for our friends, for our loved ones. Hallelujah. And we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I'm persuaded neither depth, nor height, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things above, nor things beneath, nor life, nor death, nor any other creature is able to to overpower us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, okay. And with that, we'll go to our final uh, scripture, uh, which talks about our victory in Jesus. Look at what Colossians 2 and 15 says. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made up public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Hallelujah. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. And uh, the battle is not mine, but the battle is the Lord's. God is fighting for me. And we are more than conquerors through Christ. So be encouraged. Don't be alarmed. But we have to do our fighting on our knees. Thank you for listening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to end uh, with that uh, worship song we were singing. Okay? If we our own and confide our striving would be losing unless God's man is on our side the man, man of God's own choosing <laughs> as who that may be Christ Jesus, it is He, Lord, Lord of hosts, His name, from age to age the same, and He must win the battle. 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Thank you for listening. If you like the broadcast, put likes and share it with others so more people can get to hear it. God bless you.